Hey! Ooh. Ooh. It was startling because it's been so long. You like that? Yeah. yeah. It is episode 78. Wow. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. 78 is the very small single records are 78s, right? That's right. Were they smaller? I can't they remember. Were, so they, the they, were think, they were a little bigger. They were a little bigger than 45s. So with this episode, if you speed it up, Alex and I will sound like chipmunks and you'll laugh. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be the length of a normal podcast. Yeah. And you'll <laughs> say, wow, these chipmunks have aged. <laughs> these chipmunks uh, have a lot of uh, doctor's appointments. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a crazy... First of all, uh, the one of the reasons we weren't here is Alex was supporting his good lady and our producer, Sue. <laughs> That's uh, right. Who went to clean out stuff at a house, lost somebody. And again, I'm very sorry. Yeah, well, it happens, and it happened at an appropriate time. Yeah, but let me ask you this, because you were cleaning out the house. Did uh, you find treasure? You know, you think you're gonna. And then, as it's happening, you think maybe you did. And then it, you Google stuff, because you know, you go on Google now, it has a little camera, right? Yeah. So hold it up there, and you Google it, and it, it, the first website that comes up is Etsy, usually. And they'll have the same item for sale uh, for like $9. Right. Found a, a signed uh, baseball, signed by Pete Rose. Oh. And we thought, oh, that's pretty good. That was 45 bucks. And then there was like an Underwood typewriter. Great, very old, cool looking typewriter. 200 bucks if it's mint condition. Less if it's in a wet basement and it's full of spiders. Yeah, but how much for the spiders? How much for the spiders? We mistakenly think, oh, it's old, so it's worth money. Turns out that 99.9% of the time is just old. Yeah. The time went by and nothing happened to the value. Here's what you do. You save that for the next time Tom Hanks is on your show. I think I said that when we were there. I was like, oh, he'll like an a old typewriter. And I was like, what am I? He has access to uh, good ones. Well, but depends on how you present it, because this is what you do. You keep the old typewriter. You leave the spiders in it. Oh. And when you give it, give it to Tom Hanks, who's a very nice man. You go, here, idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> pretty good. He, I think he would like that. <laughs> he probably would. Probably would. He's just pleasant. He has that quality of being pleasant. He does have that. Although he, now he's like making a little bit of a curmudgeon turn. That's kind of fun. Good for him. Good for him, right? Yeah. Well earned, well earned I say. Was it with? Was it he and Seth who drank that weird champagne diet coke thing, or was that when he was on Colbert? It must have been Colbert. I don't remember any drinking. Okay, I, I think it was Colbert. He was. Talking about how somebody accidentally put champagne in his Diet Coke and he tried it and he goes, now it's the only way I drink it. <laughs> I mean, great. A classic Hank's bit. Yep. And they had one and he goes, isn't that good? And Colbert, what, what are you going to say? Of course it's good. Tom Hanks is giving it to you. <laughs> so uh, did I'm you answering. find, okay, did you find any cursed items? um yes okay for sure some cursed items their family spent a lot of time in saudi arabia 30 or 40 years ago and there's a lot of uh mystical teapots okay. things like that yeah um i might just be saying it they were cursed because they had like arabic writing on them <laughs> which is extremely islamic phobic and racist <laughs> we were scary they were terrifying <laughs> that's part of the curse part of the curse um yes oh my god the curse is coming true <laughs> i'm getting canceled as we speak i'm sorry i'm my mother is texting me so that means it's a giant yes it started out as a giant thing she uh, had a knee replacement surgery um Rats. and didn't like it 
and is telling me uh, that it hurts. And then I sent her a basket of treats. Um, Bone says the basket was delivered. Mom says she doesn't have it, and now she's flipping out. And so I'm telling her we're on the case. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now. Yeah, I've heard I've read by the way that the recovery for the knee surgery is brutal. Mm -hmm. And then you feel amazing. Yes. You feel Generally awesome. true. feel better than you have in years. Yep. And that'll be unfortunate for mom because you can't complain about that, but she'll find a way. Don't worry. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I wasn't too worried. <laughs> no, but uh yeah, she's only like five days out from the surgery so she's why did i do this i should i shouldn't have done it there i'm gonna die there's a lot of like i think i'm dying I'm yeah like, i promise you it's just knee pain yeah and you know that, the thing you can say is hey we all are no yeah. yeah hey question are you off this week no okay good because man I got to imagine you're at least a little excited to write Tucker jokes. Yeah, we had fun today because luckily it happened early enough that we got to write a bunch of jokes uh, for tonight's I'm show. I'm looking forward to seeing that. So that's great. It was very fun. Um, I, uh, I like that people are pretending, some people pretending that this is them taking a stand against us. Shut up. Yeah, definitely shut up. Because look at all the people they didn't fire. <laughs> yeah. I sort of feel like a non-joke is what I think. I think, is he the sacrificial lamb to make it look like we're doing something? Or is it just because some of the Dominion texts that were revealed in Discovery were just so disparaging against upper management that they were like, well, you're an unpleasant person. And I that he is was such a cash cow for them that it took 150 things to get him fired. Yeah. Something just became the 150th thing. Because he's yeah. also being sued by his producer for um, workplace violations and calling her the C word and things like that. Right. More lawsuits coming down the pike from other voting machine companies. Yeah. The text. <laughs> it's like, it's a hundred different things. Crab and cake? Did... Huh? Crab cake? No, thanks. Oh, I just, I was trying to remember what. Oh, the <laughs> <laughs> It's funnier that you didn't realize what the dumb thing I was doing right away. <laughs> that was great. It's a very funny that you have that background behind you and you're offering me a crab cake. Right. <laughs> you're like a fucking weird vendor. I want to. So I want to tell everybody one of the reasons I'm very excited about this episode, other than that I haven't gotten to see my wonderful friend in a little while, and this is uh -huh. nice, Alex. But I re-listened to last episode when I posted it. Uh huh. And I I don't often listen to the whole thing because I don't enjoy me either. But uh, I did, and I was like, Lord, we were right. This is a terrible song. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a bad one. It was, if you remember, it was, you can make me free. And we were very funny in the many jokes we made, but it doesn't make up for the fact that somebody wrote that song. Yeah. Somebody we like very much. Yeah. And we will good naturedly make fun of him and as well. We should, because we adore him, but he's just a guy. In fact, I think one of the things we like is that he's just a guy who Nobody happens to be incredibly talented. Yeah. Um, but it's a terrible song. I'm sure he hates it. I bet. God, you, you'd have to. I feel like he's also a guy who hates, like, most of his songs. Yeah. So it was, and and I, and some of the times I'll I'll write well, the description, I'm, I will say, this is a good song, this is not our favorite. This is what I'm just like, it's a bad song. Um, then you picked This Night... From an innocent man. Oh, yeah. And I haven't heard this song in a long time. Yep. What a very good song. It's pretty. Also, uh, Tom Griffin, who is a friend of mine and who watches the show sporadically, 
Um, <laughs> the only way to do it. Yeah, he's doing it correctly. He mostly watches when we talk about an innocent man because he likes that album. It was his, uh, w- w- the right age for him to be introduced to Billy Joel. Ah, gotcha. Great. Well, as far as an era approximation of a 60s doo-wop song, he nails it. Yeah. I this feel might like... be the one where he gets gets it closest. Out of all the uh, Innocent Man songs? Even above the hits. Because I've said before, ah. the other ones don't really sound like their era. They sound like a guy in the 80s trying to, they sound like Huey Lewis in the news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's like some flavor from the era, but mostly it sounds like the 80s. Uh, but this, yeah. It's this gorgeous. song sounds like a doo-wop song from the early to late 60s. Yeah. It's a Not real even an approximation. You would say to yourself, I don't think they had this kind of sound equipment back then. That's the most you'd say. Yeah. You could do this really lo-fi um, with a group, and it would sound uh, amazing. Yeah, and I and think it's simple. because it's so stripped down as far as what you're trying to do. You're not trying to do the Frankie Valley thing, which is much harder to pull off. Yep. You're not trying to be a black blues singer, which there's <laughs> issues there. Yep, thanks for not doing that. You're, this is what, Frankie Avalon or something. Oh, nice. Yeah. I could, it's like Dion and the Belmonts-ish. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. It's and I'm so teens. happy you picked it because, huh? It's white teens. Yes. It's yeah. a guy with a perfect haircut right before rock and roll changes and kicks him out of the game. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Guy who thinks he has a long career ahead. Yep. It's um, yeah. It's that that guy's on the radio, and then you know Leslie Gore is next. Yep, and then Elvis happens, and everybody goes away. Yeah, no, it's after Elvis. What I'm saying is, it's it's oh, when yeah, Elvis exactly. is done, and they've sanitized an Elvis lookalike. <laughs> right, they've stripped yeah. all the danger, and it's just a guy doing a little ballad. <laughs> but and his hips are perfectly still yeah so they can show them on tv the background singers are perfect and do you know why because it's not him deciding he has to do that too yeah it's it's great it's and great. i had forgotten about it it's a nice little gem yeah you did well sir it's a nice palate cleanser from last week or three <laughs> weeks ago hooray for that yeah and 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 in that vein i mean i feel like i should let you start because it's such a good song so nice from the album an innocent man august 8th 1983 this night didn't i say i wasn't ready for a romance didn't we promise we would only be friends? What's more teen than we, we said we'd only like trying to decide what a relationship is going to be before you start it immediately? Yep, so teen. Um, and so we danced, though it was only a slow dance. I started breaking my promises right there and then. Simple but perfect, I think. Beautiful, relatable. There was nothing like when you were a young preteen or teen in your first through third slow dances of your life. Yeah. It was the horniest development that ever happened to you. Yes. Oh my that goodness. Yes. Still like vividly remember my first slow dance. More so probably than uh, my first orgy. (laughs) I remember more details. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure from the other one, you remember more smells. Smells and uh, snacks. A lot of snacks. (laughs) You need protein. Oh, that is a a joke I've made before, but it 
you well, I don't care orgy good or bad eventually somebody goes eh, I ain't eating any more of the snacks because <laughs> you're I don't know what that is now <laughs> you know when an orgy ends is when the first person goes Welp. <laughs> Don't you love that? I just love the image of a pile of writhing bodies and someone just going, well, that's it for me. Better be heading out. I got uh, the Dan, we still, uh, we still on to go to the game. Okay. Call me later. Wow. That's pretty <laughs> great. I, yeah, I vividly remember my first, so I remember my first slow dance as a in grade school, but not so much. But high school, oh my goodness, I remember the dances. Oh, the dances of yeah. high school. And Colleen Keller. Yeah. If you're watching. Who? Colleen Kelleher. Uh, I hope she's watching. A lovely pink chiffon dress. And I hope life is nice for her at this point. I hope so, too. I hope she got her braces off. <laughs> <laughs> or she liked him and kept him. You know, whatever made Colleen happy. It makes her happy. This yeah. isn't about me. It's about her happiness. That's right. Oh, I, and the next lyric I love. Now that you're here, it's not the same situation. Oh, wait. Lovely, uh, are, did you jump ahead? Oh, did I? Didn't I swear? Yes, let me back. Thank you. But that's the se- Anyway, didn't I swear there would be no complications? Didn't you want someone who's seen it all before? No, I don't think you wanted that, but okay. <laughs> now that you're here, it's not the same situation. Suddenly, I don't remember the rules anymore. You're right. I jumped ahead. I've skipped a little bit. There's actually well, not a lot of lyrics, but they're really good lyrics. Really good, really tight. I love that there's dramatic tension. Yeah. He doesn't know everything. Yeah. He's got a lot of questions. <laughs> Didn't you want someone who's seen it all before? Yeah, I get what you I get what he's saying there. You want somebody who's not gonna get washed away. Too bad. I am now caught up in you. That that's lovely. It is lovely. And also that's such a another teen sentiment, like yeah. experienced boys. Are always like she probably wants someone more experienced. Yeah, and absolutely, they don't. And let's contrast this with last week. If you're a woman or girl, and somebody has written these these kind of lyrics to you, or is approaching you this way, this is attractive. I this, should think so. This feels warm and inviting. It doesn't feel demanding and needy. It, do, it feels needy in the way that you like people to be needy, which is just to say, it feels like, hey, this person's into me, not this person's a sad sack. Right. And this is about me specifically and not just this person's general horniness. Yeah. And, the, and man, you're so damn right, because it's not, he's not demanding you fulfill his needs. He's letting you know they exist and you're part of this. Yeah. That feels good. Now that you're here, it's not the same situation. Suddenly, I don't remember the rules anymore. I think I really like that, too, because it, it makes you think about how different things are when you picture them versus when they're in execution. And yes. I, just, I just really like that. Really even like the use of suddenly, because that is how it happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. It all under control. And then you hear a song or you see her walk across the floor and it's, it's like a, something snaps. Yep. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. These this are... is the very rare song where he is basically saying, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. He always seems to not only know what he's doing, but what we should be doing. And he or... ain't mad at nobody and he's not telling you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> It's like trying to figure it out with the help of the young lady on sort of equal footing. Yeah. Now, do you remember your hey, question from last week? No. Okay. It's relevant to the lyrics you're about to read. Ah, yes. Then maybe I do. This night is mine. 
It's only you and I. Tomorrow is a long time away. This night can last forever. It's our lovely chorus. So it's like a little um, William Carlos Williams poem. It's perfectly stripped down. Yeah. Not an extra word. And it is uh, a, a piece of classical music, is it not? That's right. Who was it? I forgot. Bach? Yeah. Beethoven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Crab cake? We had a long conversation about how, of course, Beethoven's his favorite. Of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I re-listened to that part of our last show. Gotta say, last show was really good, because... That was a good observation. And then we talked about Charlie Brown for 30 minutes or what? <laughs> right. God bless us. Oh, man. what And what a good um, bridge. What is that? A, is it a bridge? I think that's the chorus. Chorus. Yeah. How nice. How nice. How nice. It's perfect. She. It's only you and I. She puts her first, which is nice. Yeah. And it does encapsulate that feeling of like everything else melting away. Yeah. You've seen it a hundred times in films. Yeah. Um, where the background falls away and it's just the two of them because it's a universal feeling. Yeah. At least at an eighth grade dance. <laughs> and, you know, it can happen like on a subway train. Or like, oh, well, you see each other through a crowd and yeah. suddenly thing in the world so suddenly something pops and you're like wow that's that's a person wow yeah probably not the six train <laughs> you're probably on the a maybe the f yeah i've been around someone like me should know better falling in love would be the worst thing i could do even though that's a negative sentiment He's saying it about himself and his problems. That's that's <laughs> very nice and romantic. Yeah. Did it I, also don't, don't believe him? Yeah. And it leans into this part really well because now he's painting an even deeper picture. Didn't I say I needed time to forget here? Aren't you running from someone who's not over you? So both these people have left a relationship that was not the greatest, or maybe it was great, but it did run its course. Right. They're both in some sort of interim period. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this till we get our heads straight. Yeah. Which is uh, norm not normally a very male sentiment. So good for him. Yeah. Again, taking her feelings into consideration understanding that he, he himself might not be ready yeah yeah it's a it's an odd funny well funny and later billy joel album well he's he's grown up some and this was a nice time for him because this would be you know he's married to christy brinkley and he's filled with a little more optimism and sure got some hits on the radio yeah doesn't feel as desperate to get hits on the radio because he's established now it's not a fight anymore just doing what he wants yeah yeah that's a good time <laughs> i hope he does this tomorrow i'm going to see him tomorrow night i'm so excited we'll talk yes god that's fantastic yeah well he was supposed to play on saturday i think and then the rangers got into the playoffs and so they Ticket, oh, everybody put their tickets back up for sale because, of course, you can come in from Jersey and see him on a Saturday night. But, of course, that's very difficult on a Tuesday. Right. Very cheap tickets were available. And Whoa. Got pretty sweet seats. That's fantastic. Yeah. Worked, worked, broke my way this time. Yeah. So you're not going to be seeing the Stevie Nicks because this is in the garden. Yeah, this is the, the old uh, residency. I think you'd have loved seeing Stevie Nicks, but honestly, seeing a longer Billy Joel show is still better. As much as I love Stevie Nicks, but you'll just get to see a longer Just Billy, so that's pretty great. Right in his uh, backyard. Yep. 
I'll, I'll do you a solid and send you a video much as you did when Please, you saw Yes, I would love that. Great. Where are we? Um, didn't I uh, say I need a time to forget here? Aren't you running from someone who's not over you? What's the one? How like? many nights have I been lonely without you? I tell myself how much I really don't care. Really nice multi-level self-awareness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many nights have I been thinking about you, wanting to hold you, but knowing you would not be there? Here's a little observation. And I like how the story's building. Because in the very beginning, it feels like this is all spur of the moment. This yeah. is the confession that this woman... Maybe this is a woman he's been friends with. Yeah. And they've had this sexual tension, but they were both in relationships. It does have that vibe. And then now is a moment where oh, we shouldn't do this. But also, you're single, I'm single, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, it is, what an economical song and it has a lot of things going on. It's a lot of dramatic tension. And yeah. the, the adding of more information uh, is not subtracting from the tension, which is nice. Yes, absolutely. Usually once you start to know too much, the tension fades. But I'm like, oh no, the every new piece of information is creating more tension. Very, very nicely done. Yeah. And again, it stays very universal, you know, wanting to hold you, but knowing you would not be there. We've all seen that movie. Yes. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. I like really, it. I like all that. Really nice work. I do not have a complaint so far. Um, the chorus is going to repeat in a minute. So why don't you read the next part too? So you don't have to read the chorus twice. <laughs> This night, you're mine. It's only you and I. I'll tell you to forget yesterday. This night, we are together. I like it. And you know what? You had observed this before. It's only you and I. She's first. It really does feel very romantic. Yeah. This is, he's, you know, not always the best <laughs> with romance in his songs. And in this case, I'll tell you to forget yesterday. I love this sentiment. And it's, you know, it, it's probably doomed to failure in the romantic sense. But that's fine because that's good in a song, good in a story of, you know, hey, this is, this is going to be great and this will work out. It doesn't have to. It yeah. just is important to know that these two lovers feel that way in this moment really lovely and also it's yeah it's it's very much the fact that it's called this night is perfect yeah this is just about this moment forget yesterday don't know what tomorrow brings you are able to stay very present in it yeah Yep, man, love. Uh, the next, this night is mine. It's only you and I. Tomorrow is such a long time away. This night can last forever. This is a perfect repeat of the chorus where the chorus isn't an overwhelming nonstop. This is, this feels necessary, which I really like because it's just which you'll say to a lover, you'll say a thing again just to go, hey, it's you and I. That's nice. It's nice. And it's also nice that uh, there are so few lyrics that he can, as a singer, really dig into each word, you know, and uh, squeeze some meaning out of it. Yeah. Man. I think this is like the kind of music that made him a musician. Yeah. Um, so it's got some, you know, very like ancient DNA vibes. Yeah. This is the music uh, he's made of inside. Yeah, and dude. Yeah. He, he managed to tap into it really well. 
Oh, lovely. Tomorrow is such a long way time away. This night can last forever. It closes it out. There's nothing, not not a thing too much, not a thing too little. It's not undercooked. It's not overcooked. It's just, and like I said, if you want to see somebody, and you're so right, it is his music. Because if you want to see somebody nailing an era specific, yeah, kind of song, this is the one. Yeah, and this is the stuff, you know, he is a huge Beatles fan uh, and always talks about how that's, you know, he became a musician because of the Beatles, but I think this is what was in his soul and in his peripheral vision before the Beatles happened. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that is, a, yeah, 100%. That's just... Yeah, one hundred percent. This was when he was twelve. Yeah, and when he got his first exposure, you know, after doing piano lessons, and he and there was music out there, and that was the oh. music discovering black artists on radio, being living a sheltered life, and suddenly hearing that and other things, and and of course, when you're a kid, hearing scary artists that because you're not used to it, but before you can get used to that. The nice sanitized Frankie Avalons or whoever. Yeah, probably the stuff that doesn't even hit you that hard. Yeah. It's just part of the environment. Yeah. It's in your cellular structure in a way that the Beatles aren't because they came along and bowled you over. Yeah. It would be neat if he would do this song live. He won't because I think he's probably forgotten about it. <laughs> maybe I'll definitely have very excitedly report if it does happen that would be incredible um, it's funny have you ever heard him do a live no right I think so it's such a deep cut but a good cut it's just probably because so when I saw him the thing that was really clear is this man is happy to perform live and he knows what you want to hear yeah so you're gonna hear vienna and i'm glad yeah you will hear piano man and oddly enough i'm glad it was a joyful group experience mm -hmm. a song like this i think everybody would be out of their minds ecstatic to hear but there would be a certain amount of people who would go i don't know what this is <laughs> right right yeah and you, you just uh, now there's a hit that he can't play because he played that. Yeah. yeah. You knocked something out of the lineup that I wanted to hear. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the encore was, I want to say he did like four more songs to the encore and it was all hits. Although yeah. that's a strong word, hits, because apparently some of the songs he did, like Don't Ask Me Why, I guess wasn't a hit. Yeah, just um, just something he likes to sing. But it's a great song. It seems like it should have been a hit to me. It really does. Yeah. I don't know how they missed that one. It's peculiar that it's not. I guess it's just people weren't like, hey, we can't like every one of this numb nuts songs. I don't know. I, I'm like, because I loved that song when it came out. Gorgeous. It had a lot of, I'm trying to remember, it, there was like a lot of acoustic guitar. Right? Yeah, and don't ask me why? Yeah. I feel like there was a All lot of... The waiters, and you know, wait a minute. More than most Billy Joel songs, there yeah. was some acoustic guitar. I was like, oh. Yeah. Um, just pretty. Every drunk must have his drink. <laughs> I just like that line a lot, too. <laughs> Very that song we we already talked about it, but I'll just say that song is a good use of cliches. Yes, and a good I didn't use mind of them. ripping off the Beatles, huh? And it's a good use of ripping off the Beatles. Absolutely. Yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, and he's I uh, was again it, watch it if there it's linked in one of our episodes, but watch his acceptance speech when he was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Because he more or less says, yes, I was derivative. Yes. <laughs> but again, I'll say it again. I don't care. It's another episode, but it's worth hearing. He said, yes, I'm derivative. 
But if you didn't have derivative artists, there would be no white artists. And then he gave this big shout out to the community of underappreciated musicians who laid the foundation, but because of racism got yeah. less money than they should. He's the best. That son of a gun is a good dude. Yeah. And you're going to see him tomorrow. See him tomorrow. That's fantastic. I'm very happy Great. for you and Sue, right? We'll be there this, this night. This night. This night. This <laughs> night. I don't think that's one of my... Wait, maybe that is. <laughs> you're at the wrong show, bro. I love. I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I would, one of my favorite things of his show is that... You see the bags under my eyes? Yeah. Uh, he's a professional entertainer. His were much worse. Didn't bother with any makeup. He's like, I'm Billy Joel. Who cares? Yeah. I'm supposed to look like this. I look exhausted and I'm not. <laughs> How late were you up last night? 10. I'm just. Ten me. Yep. <laughs> God bless him. Uh, this is probably easy. Listen, boy, don't want to... Is it listen, boy? <laughs> listen, boy. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It is a buoy. It is. It's also, there's a... It's got a bell. Got a bell, right? It's a very specific okay. bell. It actually is a bell. The, the, the bell in Gardner's Bay? Yeah. We left this morning. That's oh, right. Okay. Yep, I... I left a better. <laughs> I was like, oh, he'll probably just get it from the water. That's barely a clue, but, you know. <laughs> there's a lot of water songs, to be yeah. honest. But there's the one. There is the one. That's the one. And we already did uh, Sailing on an Emerald Bay. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Episode 31? <laughs> I think. I don't know. Well, I'll Price go back and listen to all of them and figure really? it out. This. I got to get this down. Is it itchy? No, it just looks so crazy. Yeah, it looks good though. It's not oh, bad. Oh, crazy man! It looks like you work on the Down Easter Alexa. Because I wish I did. <laughs> if it paid the same. Yeah, <laughs> you got TV <laughs> money for working <laughs> on a fishing boat. <laughs> oh man, we go out of business so fast. How excited are you for the swell today? Is that what it's called, the swell? <laughs> I'm imagining that when we do the show, I ask you boat questions. <laughs> it's choppy waters today, right? How do you guys, how do you guys like that? <laughs> I hear there's giants in the canyons. <laughs> oh, that is, I think that uh, that line always gives me the chills there are giants out there in the canyons yeah not because of the lyrics necessarily yeah the singing of it and the grandiose nature it is a good song yeah we we have talked about that we've talked about i'm always delighted this episode delights me because i'm always delighted when at episode 78 we're like oh i like this song Whew. <laughs> yeah and He's that got a deep bench. That says so much about the man that you can get to episode 78 and go. Because it's not like we did that on purpose. We were like, all right, let's only talk about stinkers for a long time. Yeah, we weren't putting this one off. No, we did. We've done hit after hit after hit. It is absolutely a deep cut. Yes, it is. It and may I be wonder why. I guess it's too. For you know, for the radio at the time, it was probably too exactly doo wop. I think that's what it is. I think that it would have made if the oldie station decided, let's play this. Yeah, it could have been a hit from like old people buying records, but then they don't because they don't have a CD player or whatever was the yeah. thing at the time. But if like Dion and the Belmonts had done this song in like '61 or whenever. Yeah. It would have blown the lid off the place. Dude, absolutely. It's it's perfect. It's it's the right radio length. It's everything. 
It's everything. It's just the wrong decade. Do you think the other thing too is so an innocent man, he does so much of that, the whole album. I wonder if it's just, I mean, half of it's just the record company making a choice. Are we going to release this as a single? Sure. Are we going to push this? Is this the image we want? Because I feel like you could have put this out. And that is just such a gamble and such a, you know, I was watching a video about the police and yeah. every little thing she does is magic, which I didn't know was the song that broke the group up, which is pretty funny. <laughs> I wouldn't, I didn't know that. Sting was a relentless, was relentless in saying, we got to put this on an album, it'll be a hit. And they were relentless in saying, this song is too soft. Yeah. It was their first number one when he finally got it on an album. And Sting went, okay, from now on, I'm going to be the Sting I've always wanted to be. Here's the song I wrote. We're doing it. Yeah. And they were like, oh, now we're not a band. Yeah. Synchronicity is a great album because of that. But yep. it's also very much, it's practically his first solo album. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Minus, you know, Mother, which is, of course, Stuart Copeland, I think. It's, that's his song, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, that, the, I'll say this about Mother, too. Mother is a song that when it, when I first heard it, I thought it was terrible. Oh, really? Yeah. And then because it was too much for me, I couldn't handle it. Yeah. And later on, when I became familiar with my feelings about my mother, I was like, oh, I just think this song's pretty great. Yeah. I remember it, the first time I heard it, I thought it was hilarious. Yes, you did. Of course you did. Yeah. It was very, I was like, is this like a Weird Al song? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was like, oh, this is like a Dr. Demento. Yep. And I, I'm, 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 a weird album. And I'm, especially when I was younger, but I can still be this way, but I try to correct my thinking when I catch myself is I'm very much a, this thing belongs in this box. So yeah, when I hear a song that's clearly a funny song, but on an album by a band that's supposed to just be a band, it's jarring to me. Yeah. And it shouldn't be. I should just enjoy that, you know, that sometimes people want to do funny things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be in that business to take a run at it. Yeah, and yeah. Lord, yeah, I'm down with this song. It was just such a nice little, but uh, whole album's pretty good. I will tell you in a little bit what I picked and why I picked it. Okay. I, I'm I'm in that. I'm hankering for some trivia. Hey, hankering. Okay, if you're hankering, I do want to. I have an aside question. That's not a trivia question. Bust. Um, what do you think is Billy Joel's funniest song? It's Big Shot. <laughs> it is Big Shot. It's think Big it's... Shot. It's one of the reasons I love that song because his Billy Joel's uh I feel about Billy Joel's comedy the way I feel about Star Trek's comedy. He doesn't do it well often, but he does everything else really well. Yeah. And I'm probably wrong. He definitely has some funny lyrics. It's yeah. just my job to be judgmental on this show. But I Big mean, Shot, it's just it does have dress it. with your Halston dress. God. And you have to be a big shot. Big shot. And I love, it's no big sin to put your two cents in if you know when to leave it alone. God damn, that's great. Great. He'll do that feels, tomorrow. Huh? He'll do Big Shot. Oh, yes, he will. Fuck. I Hearing that live was wicked good. <laughs> and his band, my God, he knows the deal. He's got the yeah. most professional. We know what we're doing. Our sound guys know what they're doing. Up. Every tech person here, he probably has his own popcorn vendor. He's like, no, no, this is how you do the popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Move. Yeah. Move. Oh. Yeah, big, it's Big Shot. What What is another? Give me a second that you're like, yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, I think Close to the Borderline is very funny. Yeah? <laughs> it's just... Uh, but not intentionally. 
I think it was like, oh, I'm going to do a song about gritty New York, uh, which it is, and the details are great, but then it's so poppy. Yeah. Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 Unintentionally funny, uh, even though I do like the song musically, is the Battle of the Billy the Kid is just... Oh, yeah. Cartoonish. Unintentional, like the first three albums have a lot of unintentional great comedy. Yeah. But when you, you know, after I got that out of my system, when we did that, now when I hear the song, I'm just like, the music's very good. It is a state commercial, but it's a good state commercial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right. I learned this today, which is true of many of our trivia questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, the song Allentown. Uh was he recrafted a song he had written earlier, um, never finished, same, I assume, melody about a different city. What city? Uh, uh, well, we're living here in Sacramento. <laughs> no, <I> <laughs> it didn't fit. Um, it, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a giveaway hint. It was his hometown. And why, what the hell is wrong with me right now? We're living here in, I know he's from New York. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's from, uh, we're living here in my hometown, right? <laughs> I'm blanking. What is it? The gist. Um, Levittown. Levitt. God damn it, Jim. Come on. Yeah, Long Island. Yeah. I, knew, first I was like, it can't be first. just Long Island. It's Levitt. Okay, Levitt. Yeah. He's, he wanted to write a song about uh, the struggles of ordinary people in his hometown. And they gave up on it. And then later on, it's like, oh, I'll write it about Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where all this steel, work, uh, steel workers are on strike. And he's like, well, Bethlehem doesn't sound right. What's nearby? Oh, <laughs> Allentown. Yeah. Great. And he's like, I'll put Bethlehem in the lyrics. Yeah. Notice. Allentown's such a fun song. He did it at the concert I went to. I enjoyed this part. Tell me, does he always do this? He's getting ready to do it. He's at the piano and he goes, does he always do that? Probably. He goes like this and then it goes, Whoo! train whistle <laughs> when uh the, i remember one time i saw him and he made a big deal out of introducing uh the bus drivers on his tour oh and nice like four bus drivers came out in hard hats with big uh, metal pipes and hammers and they made all the little hammering sounds <laughs> in the background that's really fun really great He's like, there you go. There's our bus drivers. They take care of us, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the one thing he said, which won't happen at your concert, is so the, the stage rotated this way and that way. Hmm. And, he, and at some point, at one point, he goes, and that is all the stagecraft that will happen tonight. This is not my regular venue. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> And Lord, that's really funny. He's I think he's funnier than he's ever been because he likes himself. He's not mad. He's at peace. Yeah, he's in probably better shape than he has been in a while. Here's what I think. I think sometimes certain grumpy youngsters age into comfortable old men and certain too cocky young people age into the grumpy old men we don't enjoy. Yes. He, you, get, I, you get one sweet spot. <laughs> yep. He was meant he was meant to be 70. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that way about myself. I'm like, other than like the sugar and the whatever dumb problems I have, but like as far as just generally feeling all right about stuff, this is the age where that's true. Nice. Yeah. I think I'm, um, mine's still a little bit ahead. <laughs> Like five to eight years out, I'm going to be yeah. pretty thrilled. Well, yeah, listen, but listen, the chats we've had, you're, you've always been a lovely fellow, but 
yeah, I just feel like you're much happier with yourself now too, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you nail it as far as partners. Sue's just an absolute delight. You just, she's a dream. She's a wonderful person. So you just got it right. I got lucky. I got that right early. It just took me a long time to realize I had. <laughs> yeah. The having and the realizing. Yeah. Take, and also take a while to line up. Look, I started hitting on Sue 30 years ago. Oh. So I know all about bad timing. But uh, yeah. Oh, now, we, now we got it. Oh, that's really nice. That's nice. <laughs> Um, now, next episode will be 79, and I picked a song, and I have a thing to talk about ahead of the song. A friend of Mary Jo's, I think it's her friend, or it may just be an artist she likes, did a cover of this song, hmm. and so I'll include that as a link next week, but it's This Is The Time. Oh, okay. Nice. And the cover, I like Billy Joel's version of it great the cover's really good and sung by a female voice uh, huh. is uh it does something for the song great i don't know if it's better but it's not worse it's definitely nice <laughs> uh it's way poppier than his version of it although his version is very poppy and a little bit of electronic and stuff yeah and uh is that the one with some beach sounds yeah some sound effects yeah wait to talk about that I love me some sound effects. Oh, he's your man. Motorcycles, horns. <laughs> Whistles. <laughs> Great. Yeah. We did it, everybody. We'll see you as long as nothing bad happens to Alex or Jim this week. We'll see you next week. If something dumb happens, we'll see you in three weeks. 50-50 chance. <laughs>